Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Alaska Pipeline Service Company, fueling philanthropic programs and dedicated to creating educational and professional opportunities for Alaska Native people. The National Weather Service. Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Perry Danny. This is your weather for April 15, 2016. You can follow us on www.arh.noaa.gov as well as Facebook and Twitter. Starting off with the satellite tonight, uh, as we put it in, in the loop, uh, we have a low pressure system just sitting southeast of Kodiak with a trailing uh, uh, occluded front extending through the uh, Gulf region and it's bringing a swath of uh, clouds through the uh, uh, Gulf and along the northern coastal uh, communities. Putting it into loop here, uh, the, that uh, clue system has a warm, fr a warm front extending just south of, uh, of Hanagai, eastward um, in this region here. Uh, and that's bringing some, uh, uh, along with the clue front along the southeast panhill, continued cloud cover pushing into the southeast panhill, as well as uh, uh, northern coastal communities. Um, somewhat uh, downsloping along the Anchorage Bowl, but uh, farther north, uh, pretty much uh, clear skies uh, all north of the Alaska Range and extending over to the east, uh, just uh, east of Seward Peninsula. Uh, the big system to talk about is this, uh, as I put the satellite in the loop, is this a, a strong occluded system that's uh, tracking just uh, southwest of the uh, western Aleutians, a, a strong uh, southeasterly push, a large swath of moisture moving into the western Aleutians and spilling over uh, into the western bearing. Uh, farther north, you're going to have this uh, northerly flow here uh, showing uh, uh, colder air from the, the um, um, High pressure sitting over the Beaufort Sea, easterly flow here. Some cloud cover predominantly over the Arctic and western uh, northwest coastline. As I put it in the loop here, they hear the northerly flow is pushing the, the with weak, there's going to be weak troughs pushing down here, moving the uh, colder air down into the uh, central Bering Sea. So you're going to have a, a continued uh, cloud cover. Uh, today's weather, uh, again, here's these uh, weak troughs setting over the eastern Brooks Range, uh, and that's uh, producing easterly flow with some scattered uh, um, snow showers and some blowing snow issues, but not enough to issue a, a advisory or blizzard warnings there. Uh, last time I saw it was like three miles uh, there east of uh, uh, Barrow. Some fall conditions there at Barrow along the uh, northwest uh, northwest uh, coastline as well as extending down to the Bering Strait. You have the scattered snow showers all the way down to the Privilege as these weak troughs push on through. Uh, and then in the southeast panhandle, uh, you're going to have this occluded front that's extending all the way through uh, the southeast panhandle. You're going to have light rain onshore flow there. And then there is some light rain on the eastern Kenai region also uh, with this uh, occluded low just south of the uh, Kodiak region. And then here's this uh, uh, strong occluded front that's uh, approaching uh, the western Aleutians there, and that's uh, producing strong southeast gusty winds and a wintery mix in, in this region. Uh, tonight's forecast, this strong uh, occluded low pressure system will continue to move eastward. And with that, it'll just continue to move the wintery mix farther east into the Bering Sea. So a continued strong gradient here with close, closely packed isobars. Uh, you have some blowing uh, snow conditions farther there over the Kamchatka Peninsula. But uh, along the central Aleutians, the, you have the warm front approaching and that'll, that'll continue to move uh, eastward here and, and to the northeast. The southeast and the northern Gulf, uh, pretty much uh, the occluded uh, low will continue to fall apart as this front falls apart here. Uh, onshore flow, so light rain throughout the southeast Panhill, extending over to the northern coastal communities as well as down the Kodiak region. Uh, farther north, the easterly flow, some light flurries across the Brooks Range and Arctic uh, coastline there. And uh, you do have um, a weak low pressure system there just uh, along the uh, north of the eastern um, Alaska range and you get some wintery mix on the backside with the cooler temperatures and then that weak trough that's, uh, that's 
uh, pushing down through the Seward Peninsula into the northern barren. You'll get out ahead of it. You'll have some scattered uh, snow showers farther along the, the chain here, uh, the eastern Aleutians and part of the Alaska Peninsula. You'll have a wintry mix of colder air being uh, east uh, from Cape uh, Serifchef uh, westward to, uh, to Dutch. You'll have some scattered snow showers. Saturday's forecast, uh, this strong 907 millibar uh, occluded low will continue to move uh, to the northeast and with a low part of the occluded front extending through the, the western barrier then. Again, the, it'll, it'll push this wintry mix farther east into the, the central, uh, central uh, bearing. And from the eastern gulf all the way up to the northern barrier, you're going to have uh, scattered snow showers and that uh, continued weak trough that's extending through the uh, Bering Strait up into the Chukchi Sea. Uh, that'll uh, produce uh, some uh, scattered snow showers out ahead of it. Uh, farther east, um, over the uh, Brooks Range, you're going to have uh, continued uh, uh, light flurries and easterly winds in that region there. Along the southeast uh, panhandle, you'll have the uh, continued uh, onshore flow, with some light rain, and that low, a weak low flow pressure system there uh, just east of the Alaska Range will continue to move eastward, and uh, it'll produce some light uh, uh, light rain with it, with a wintery mix on the backside with the cooler temperatures. Over the Kodiak, uh, you know, they'll be in a dry slot, but with a weak trough extending through the Alaska Peninsula, last extending up through the uh, lower uh, and upper Cusquin Valley. So you'll have uh, some uh, light rain in there. And then along the, from Dillingham West, you'll have a, a wintry mix as well extending through as you get farther near uh, um, Port, uh, um, Port Mola region, right in this region along the Alaska Peninsula. Sunday's forecast, this occluded low will, will begin to weaken and it'll, uh, it'll continue to fall apart. The tighter gradient will be out ahead of it again, and that'll be extending from the central to the eastern Aleutians. So a wintery mix extending there from Pervlofs northward. And then farther north uh, through the Bering Strait and the lower Chukchi Sea, you're going to have uh, that weak trough pushing through, so producing some scattered uh, snow showers. On the back side, as they're occluded low, you'll have the cooler air filtering in, so you'll have a wintery mix pretty much from the western Aleutians, from the central to the western Aleutians. Uh, for the uh, northern Gulf, you're going to have a, a southerly push uh, with the, with the, uh, these weak waves forming uh, with uh, later on when we talk about the jet stream, we'll see a strong south, uh, southwesterly uh, jet that's moving up this region. So uh, it's helping to, to move these weak troughs up here, weak low pressure systems. So continue onshore flow along the southeast panhandle and the northern Gulf with uh, light rain in that region. And now that'll move on through to the uh, 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 Southwest Territory and into the along the the Alaska Range farther north. You'll get a wintery mix as you go farther north at the cooler temperatures. As continued, that weak trough will be pushing through another short wave, and that'll produce some light flurries along the the uh, central to eastern Brooks Range as, as well as the Arctic uh, coastline. Uh, temperatures as of 2 p.m. Uh, for the southeast, uh, pretty nice temperatures. Again, not, not surprising. Just as warm as yesterday, just about. Uh, uh, we had 46 at Cloak and then 50 there in the inside waters uh, at Skagway, 50. And then the northern Gulf, south central region, uh, Valdez at 45, Kodiak, not Kodiak, uh, Kodiak at 44, but uh, um, Anchorage at 45, uh, Glen Allen 50, uh, Talkeetan at 52. And then as you move along the Alaska Peninsula, pretty much all in the uh, lower uh, to mid 40s. Then along the uh, Arctic coastline, again, uh, with that Arctic high pressure system sitting up here, you're going to have the easterly flow, cooler air bringing in here. So that's why you have cooler temperatures and uh, zero degrees was the lowest there at Anaktuvik Pass, uh, five degrees at Barrow going along the northwest uh, coastline, uh, Wainwright at seven, uh, Point Lay at four, and Cape Lismore at 12. And these continue to be cooler temperatures, the so 19, a little warmer there at, uh, at Gamble. And then uh, the Arctic Village coming at 19 as you go farther south, uh, a little bit warmer, but pretty much that warm southerly air and the low pressure system sitting here at the warm air, you're, you're seeing those uh, upper 40 degree temps there. Temperatures along the chain, uh, pretty much uh, as mentioned before, uh, we have some high temperatures in the southwest. Uh, uh, King Salmon at 57 for at 2 p.m. That's pretty pretty high down sloping event there drying out, and then 53 at uh, Iliamna, 51 at Dillingham, and then um, 
Cape Newenham was a little, a little cooler at 37. Again, but all in the uh, mid 40s uh, as you go along the Alaska Peninsula and Eastern Aleutians. Uh, even out here at Adak and, and Atka 39, again with that strong uh, occluded front out this system and a warm, warm front in this region, it's bringing all that uh, warmer air in here. That's why it's uh, 39 degrees, pretty warm, even out to Shemya Freeport in 37. Uh, tonight's low temperatures, the coolest ones are going to be along the Arctic coastline, uh, minus one there at uh, Cape Lisbon. And then as you go, you'll cool off as you go, continue to be cool as you go farther uh, south, 17 there at Gamble with a northerly flow. Uh, still continue uh, mid 30s, upper 30s along the Alaska and eastern Aleutians, as well all the way out to Shemya, again with that strong southeasterly flow. Uh, plenty of warm air in that region. The southeast will continue to be nice uh, in, uh, in the uh, upper 30s to lower 40s, 41 come in there at Cloak. Tomorrow's high temperatures, again not surprising, uh, cooler temperatures along the Arctic coastline, uh, 6 degrees there at Barrow, uh, Point Hope coming in at 11, Tin City 18 as you go along, but at the southwest uh, definitely warmer in the upper 40s to lower 50s, 52 at King Salmon, uh, the south central region uh, 53 at the uh, uh, Anchorage, 46 at Valdez, and then uh, uh, the southeast panhandle, uh, pretty much all in the uh, upper f um, 40s to lower 50s, uh, a little higher there, I believe that's at Yakutat at 55, uh, 54. And then along the chain, uh, pretty much all in the uh, 40 degree range, 43 at Shemya. Uh, flying weather. Uh, IFR to margin of VFR conditions here, again with this strong occluded front out here, uh, that's where your swath is going to be from the, the western Aleutians uh, in that region. Also in the, the Bristol Bay region or Cosquam Delta, YK Delta region, extending up to the Seward Peninsula right through here in that region. Also along the Brooks Range and extending along the Arctic coastline with that easterly flow and plenty of cloud cover and cooler air. The uh, southeast, you'll have on, the onshore flow, so that will be covered in marginal VFR conditions, as well as the northern coastal communities, Prince William Sound, extending the eastern Kenai, extending down to the Kodiak region and portions of the Alaska Peninsula. Flying weather for the afternoon, this uh, marginal to IFR conditions will continue to move eastward as this low pressure system that's approaching the south uh, western, uh, western Aleutians range, um, western uh, yeah, western chain that is, sorry about that. Uh, that'll continue to move the this, this system farther east and extend all the way uh, past uh, ADAC and into the, starting to move into the central uh, bearing. You have marginal VFR conditions uh, through the, uh, uh, along the Alaska Peninsula, Eastern Lucians, all the way up to the uh, Seward Peninsula region. And then IFR to, and marginal VFR along the Arctic coastline, again with that easterly flow through there and the cooler temperatures, uh, so there will be continued uh, flurries through there. Uh, the southeast, you'll have some marginal VFR over the, the Dixon entrance. And then uh, along the uh, western coastline, uh, Gulf coastline, you're going to have through Prince William Sound, Eastern Kenai, Kodiak region, portions of Alaska range in here and then up through the northern Matsu uh, Valley, valleys that is. Tomorrow's flying conditions, uh, Anaktuvik marginal VFR to VFR, and then Attigan marginal VFR to VFR, Lake Clark and Merrill marginal VFR, and then Rainy marginal VFR, and then Windy marginal VFR to VFR, and Isabel marginal VFR to VFR, Mentassa MVFR to VFR, and then Tanita VFR to marginal VFR, Portage marginal VFR, Chillicook and White marginal VFR to VFR, and then tomorrow's freezing levels with a cooler air northerly flow here is reaching all the way down into the, uh, to Dutch and portions of the Alaska Peninsula. But with that southeasterly flow, you're going to see the, the, the higher freezing levels make sense with the strong southwesterly southeasterly flow and the warm front extending right through here. So you're going to have uh, freezing levels two to six thousand feet over the the Gulf. Uh, Again, with this uh, southerly flow, you're going to have uh, the freezing levels um, a little bit lower to along the Alaska range, but for the most part, it's going to be around 2,000 feet there, right, right along the northern coastline, as well as 2 to 4 uh, over the, the uh, Yukon Territory. And the southeast panhandle, uh, 2 to 6,000 with this high pressure ridges farther uh, in the lower 48. Tomorrow's icing. Uh, you're going to have light to occasional widespread rotter from 8 to 10,000 with this swath right through here from the central to the western Aleutians. Uh, 
and the bearing there with that occluded system. And then uh, above 4,000 along the uh, eastern bearing to the northern bearing up to the Seward Peninsula, above 4,000 along the Arctic coastline. From 7 to 10 along the Dixon entrance, and then from 7 to 10,000 feet along the, the eastern uh, Kenai extending to Kodiak and portions of the Alaska Range up extending them to the western Alaska Range there. Tomorrow's jet stream, northwesterly flow, 155 knots, transitions to southwesterly 30, then a strong northwesterly jet digging through the, the uh, uh, eastern illusions as they dig down to long way trough here, then a transition to southwesterly, uh, 125 knots, then <clears throat> northwesterly jet extending through the lower 48. Through the uh, uh, Kamchatka Peninsula to the e eastern Siberian, you have a southwesterly jet there at 80. Tomorrow's 9,000 foot winds, strongest wind southwest over the Gulf, uh, over the uh, western bearing there with that uh, occluded low pressure system, so 50 to 45 knots there region. And then in the southeast, you have the low pressure system, cyclonic flow, uh, 20 knots, 15 on the north side and 15 to 30 knots on the, strong, on the back side there towards uh, the Arctic coastline. The southeast southerly winds, 25 to 30 knots, transition to easterly at, I mean westerly to 20 knots. Tomorrow's 3,000 foot winds, strongest southwest through here, uh, through the western uh, chain and to the western bearing, and then transition to southeast to 45. Weak cyclonic flow, just with that low pressure system over the Seward Peninsula, and then uh, southeasterly flow along the Arctic, along the southeast panhandle, and then it transitions to westerly at 15. Tomorrow's turbulence, below 4,000, light to occasional moderate along the central to western Aleutians, and then below 4,000 4, along the Arctic coastline. We'll be back with your Marines after this. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor. Thank you to the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health for allowing us to bring you hangar flying. Thank you also to Alaska Public Media for your support. This evening, we are pleased to have back on our show, John Pratt. He is the Seaplane Pilot Association's Alaska Field Director. Welcome back to Hangar Flying, John. Thank you, it's good to be here. On our last show, we talked about some of the history with the Spring Seaplane Seminar. And this show, I'd like to talk about a little bit what people can expect from this year's seminar. Um, can you tell us when this is? The seminar will be the 16th of April and it will be at the University of Alaska Aviation Complex on Merrill Field. We have the uh, auditorium uh, for our use and we're going to have some additional overflow rooms. But this year one of the things that I'm particularly interested in, in seeing and seeing how it works is the opportunity for some distance delivery. That will allow people who are actually not physically present here for whatever reason, either they live outside of the Anchorage area or can't make it for whatever reason, to be a participant in the organization uh, and in the, in the seminar and take away from it some of the safety tips that we hope to provide. That's been a goal of the Safety Foundation for many years, so um, knock wood, that'll come to fruition this year. <laughs> um, so. Can you give us some information about the start time and the end time? What time should people get their, um, their planes um, warmed up in order to fly in if they're going to fly in <laughs> or head to um, a building where they can uh, join in watching with their friends? Okay, the, the seminar registration will start at 8 o'clock and uh, the actual program will start at 9. Uh, between that time we'll have the usual, uh, the usual processing, if you will, uh, in the coffee pot and that sort of thing. Uh, and you will be doing a short presentation during that period too. Uh, so, eight o'clock. Show up at eight o'clock, and uh, it should be an interesting time. And um, it is an all-day event. Uh, lunch will be served. Lunch will be served. It'll be provided by Alpha Eight a Row, and th they're asking ten dollars for for the meal. And I think that that's a very rational amount and I think it's a very good cause to support because the people that are in that organization are the future of our industry and they will be not only the people that are doing it, but will be influencing those that help make it happen. So it's very important for us to support them and to support all the youth that we can bring into our, our, our wonderful world of aviation. Absolutely, they are the future. Yes. Um, and I think it's a great opportunity for them to hear 
the presentations as well as hang out with pilots. Yep. It's always fun. Um, one of the most popular features at past seminars has been a maintenance panel. Um, we've had the opportunity for people in the audience to ask questions about aircraft um, after they've been stored all winter or float maintenance. Um, anything that they have questions about, um, they're free to ask. So you're going to be on that panel this year. I will. And can you tell us about any topics that um, might be focused on or that might be of interest this year? There, there are many areas of interest that people should be aware of. Uh, Corrosion is, is obviously an issue for those of us that have uh, seaplanes and, and fly in water areas. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the other things. As you know, I run a maintenance operation, and we have found in the past 18 months four airplanes with cracked gearbox castings. Ooh. A Cessna 150 with flat steel gear, a Cessna 170A model, a Cessna 170B model, and a Cessna 172. So these, this is a fairly critical aspect of, of the airplane. And we'll talk a little bit about that just so that people are aware of it. That's definitely something that they can ask their mechanics or, or themselves if they're uh, doing an owner-assisted um, annual because that can certainly ruin somebody's day. Yeah. And the other opportunity that we have is that if you have an airplane that you put on wheels and convert it to floats, those landing gear legs are out so you can inspect it and inspect it closely. So there's, and, and the more of this information that we can share with the pilot population uh, and those that hold not only pilot certificates but me mechanic certificates, the safer our industry will be. Absolutely. So do people need to register, you mentioned registration at 8 o'clock, do people need to register in advance? Uh, they don't uh, show up uh, ready to have a good time and we'll have a sign-in sheet as we've had in the pa past. Uh, when you sign in, you'll get the patch. And I'm not quite sure how we will do patches with distance delivery. We'll need to talk about that at some point in time. Uh, and also the wings uh, portion of the program with people that are getting it on, on a distance delivery basis. So wings credit is available. It is available and encouraged. There are many advantages to it and I highly recommend it to people. Very good. Thank you so much, John. We look forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow at the seminar. Thank you, and I look forward to everyone being there. It's a great organization. It's a great chance for people to get together and uh, take away some safety things. And thank you to the Seaplane Pilots Association for your help in organizing. We, we appreciate it. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope to see you tomorrow, Saturday, April 16th, at the Seaplane Seminar. Until next time, fly safely. Welcome back to your Alaska weather. I'm meteorologist Perry Daney. Now starting off with uh, the sea surface temps. Again, the, the cooler temperatures are going to be here with the northerly flow uh, through the central and the lower Bering Sea. Uh, the warmer temperatures are going to be with the southerly flow here uh, through the uh, northern Gulf uh, and southeast Panhandle with the warmest along the uh, just south of the Hanagawai region. Starting with, with the uh, uh, sea ice forecast, uh, continued uh, with this uh, a strong low cooler low that's going to be pushing this way and bringing the southeasterly flow. Uh, look for the, the sea ice pack here to, to move uh, westward in the next five days, uh, 10 to 20 nautical miles. And then the look for along the, the uh, coastline, the southwest, uh, in the Norton Sound region all the way extending down to the Cusquan Bay region. We look for the ice to continue to break away. And then this, uh, Saturday's marine forecast for the south East region, you're going to have uh, 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 gale f uh, small craft winds coming out of the Dixon entrance area in the in inside waters. Southerly flow 10 to uh, 20 knots as you go farther north toward the Skagway. And then the outside waters, uh, small craft uh, beginning again near Dixon entrance, transition to southeasterly and weaker 20 knots up there. Sunday, uh, the inside waters, uh, northerly flow, 10, uh, 20 knots, and then southeasterly through the Dixon entrance, 25 knots. Outside waters, small craft, uh, 25 knots, southerly flow, and then it transitions to easterly there near Yakutat. And then Saturday, for the south central, uh, you're going to have predominantly easterly flow around the, the eastern Kenai and the Prince William Sound, and then it transitions to northeast as you get the Kodiak. Uh, through the uh, inside waters here, uh, the Cook Inlet, you're going to have northeasterly flow, then easterly as you get down to the Barren Islands and northeast at 15 through the uh, Shallow Cough region. 
Then Sunday, uh, light and variable winds pretty much in the northern Gulf as, as well as the northern Cook Inlet, northeasterly flow in the southern Cook Inlet, and then transitions to easterly 15 knots down through Shellcroft region, and pretty much all easterly to southeasterly 15 knots uh, through uh, the eastern Kenai region, extending down the Kodiak region. Then for the Alaska uh, marine forecast for Alaska Peninsula, light variable on the Pacific side there, uh, just uh, east of the Shirakov Islands, and then northerly 25 knots small craft near the Shumigan Islands. On the Bering side, northwesterly 15, and then easterly there uh, as you get uh, from uh, basically from uh, Port Moeller uh, westward to uh, uh, Cape Stereshev on the lower end. Sunday's forecast, parameter all southeasterly flow, uh, small craft. Uh, wave heights are going to be higher on the Pacific side, 13 there in the Shumigan Islands, and 5 to 7 on the Bering side. And then Aleutian Islands, uh, southeasterly fall, flow there with uh, gale force uh, winds, predominantly all from the central Aleutians all the way out to Shemya. And then for uh, Sunday, pretty much a southwesterly flow with that low pressure system in the front extending down here just southwest of Shemya. So you're going to have a, a, a small craft winds. You do have gale force there, uh, there just north of Dutch. And then for the west coast, uh, primarily all northerly flow, the northwesterly through the, coming off the White Cay Delta into the Bristol Bay region, and then southeasterly flow near the Privilofs, and gale force winds uh, northeasterly there, uh, St. Matthew Island. And then for uh, Sunday's forecast, northeasterly flow, flow uh, come through the northern bearing, and that'll be um, extending through St. Matthew. Easterly flow, small craft there for St. George, and southeasterly through the, uh, cust uh, the uh, Bristol Bay region. The Arctic coastline, uh, Sunday, Saturday's forecast, pretty much easterly through northeasterly, pretty much all the way through, uh, through the Bering Strait, and that'll be ranging from uh, small craft as you get uh, down through the strait. Same thing for Sunday, easterly flow 20 knots, and then small craft as you go through the northwest uh, coastline. And then tonight's forecast, low pressure systems that over, over the just southeast of Kodiak, bringing light rain along the northern southeastern Panhill and the northern coastal communities. That's it for your forecast. For These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.